What are you doing back there? Oh, I should buckle up, you know, for safety. Yeah, with, with me, the control small. <laughs> Shoot! What? Uh, I just lost service. On the Starlink? You have a Starlink? Uh oh. <laughs> Dude, can I use that? Yeah, no worries, man. What are you trying to use it for? Oh, uh, I was just trying to stream some Netflix and like upload this YouTube video for you. <laughs> Your bill come in the mail. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Mark Brown here with Eleven Aviation in front of this Kodiak 900. And I'm going to talk to you today about this little piece of hardware that I think has been a game changer in the world of general aviation and turboprops. This is the Starlink coupled with the Mid-Continent Instruments USB-C. So come with me, I'm gonna show you guys how I've outfitted our managed fleet of single engine turboprops with the Mid-Continent Instrument USB-C plus the Starlink. So I've been flying Kodiaks all over the world for 13 years and I would have killed for something like this years ago. To have Wi-Fi in the cockpit is second to none for both safety as well as comfort and passenger happiness, but it has always been so expensive and basically impossible to put in something like a Kodiak or Epic or other single engine turboprop. And Starlink has come out, amazing piece of hardware, but we've run into issues with how do you fasten it to the plane? Well, the cool thing with an airplane like the Kodiak is we can just put it up in the glare shield and that actually allows me to take this little Starlink Mini and I can use it in my office or if I'm out camping or whatever. Uh, and Mid-Continent Instruments has come out with their 100 watt uh, USB-C plug-in that this little cord plugs into and it powers this Mini so we have Wi-Fi that really doesn't cost much more than what you pay in your home. So we've been doing this Starlink thing in flight now for a little over a year and we've sort of uh, gone a lot of different directions. Initially, we were thinking about maybe doing a dish on top of a Kodiak, doing an STC for that. Uh, but at the end of the day, in a Kodiak, sort of what we figured was most economical, what most of our managed clients and customers had mentioned was that they really wanted to be able to remove the dish and take it with them, whether they were camping or they were in the back country or whatever, they didn't want the dish to be part of the airplane to where it was only useful in the plane. You don't want to have multiple Starlink dishes that you carry around. So it's also very costly. It would have been likely tens of thousands to be able to, you know, do an STC and then that cost would have had to, would, would have, had to have been passed to the customer. So we went with just basically the Starlink kit being the USB terminal that can power the Starlink Mini. Uh, and it, in the Kodiak, we don't have anything metallic. We don't have a heated windshield or anything like that. So the, the, the satellite goes right through the windscreen. And now, you know, a year and a half on from when we started this, there's so many Starlinks all around the world that we haven't found a dead spot yet, whether we're over the ocean ferrying a Kodiak or a, another turboprop or here in the U.S. going all different directions, we basically have a 99.9% .9 uptime. And uh, so, and, and the other thing is, is the way we install it, you have the dish, uh, which is, you know, we have wrapped in a black silicone case, so there's no glare. Yeah, it's up in the, it's in the glare shield, but for me as a pilot, I'm over here, it's over on the co-pilot side typically. Um, and then on top of all that, we also have the usefulness of a 100 watt USB-C port, which means that should I not want Starlink and want to be able to charge a, you know, a laptop or anything else, I've got a super high power USB-C so I can keep my MacBook uh, charged or whatever. Um, the other benefit of this is you don't need a full sort of uh, approval process. It's not an STC. We don't need an STC for it. So it's it's not a major alteration in that sense. Now, I'm not a mechanic, so disclaimer, don't take my word for it. Obviously, check with your mechanic in your local jurisdiction because there might be different rules where you are. But in our case, we found that this is sort of the best path forward. It's certainly the cheapest, uh, and it allows you to remove your Starlink satellite dish to use it elsewhere. Um, outside the airplane, um, and frankly, this is also like a one-day install as opposed to having the airplane down for multiple days, putting a dish on top, etc. So that's how we have gone about it. Like I said, we've 
done different iterations of installs, whether it's sort of up on the glare shield or on the avionics stack like it is here. You can put it anywhere. That's the beauty of the mid-continent. It's tiny. Um, so that's how we've installed it. And then I don't have to really sell Starlink to anybody, but uh, you know we get consistently here in the U.S. at least a lower 48, 200 plus uh, per second uh, download speed. Even up in Alaska, I was up there uh, in May, and we were still getting 100 plus megabits per second download speed up uh, up there. So um, it has been a phenomenal upgrade to GA, general aviation, and in something like a Kodiak or an Epic, et cetera, um, it's the easiest, cheapest way to get into Wi-Fi on board your airplane. All right, so right now it looks like we are getting about 130, um, 140 uh, down. Uh, up, we're getting like 15, 16, 17. And latency is uh, looking like around 17 milliseconds. So just a quick... Uh, Quick overview of the Starlink powered by the Mid Continent USB port. So it's pretty amazing technology, and Mid Continent has made it extremely accessible for just about anybody in general aviation to now have high speed internet. So it's something that we are installing in all of our managed airplanes. Super easy in Mid Continent, of course, they have been making avionics for decades. They are the bee's knees when it comes to this stuff, and we are excited to partner with them on all of our airplanes getting the high power USB-C from Midcontinent.